From Crunch Econometrics, welcome to the concluding part of our series on co-integration tests in AVUs. We mentioned in our previous videos that after performing stationary tests, you are likely to have three outcomes. The first one could be that the series are all integrated of order zero. The second outcome could be that the variables are all stationary at first difference, while the third outcome which is the focus of this tutorial could be when the variables are integrated of different orders. If you have such a situation, performing a cointegration test is still necessary to establish whether a long-run relationship exists or not. But in this case, you cannot use the Johansson cointegration test. You can only use the bounds test proposed by Pesaran, Sheen and Smith in 2001. What is the null hypothesis of this test? The null is that there is no cointegrating equation, while the alternative simply states that the null is not true. But before you go ahead to perform this test, I need to let you know that you have to use only the level form of the variables and not their false difference. It is also appropriate to use the log transformation of the raw variables, as I'll be using in this example. So do not perform the cointegration test on the first difference. Only use the level form or the log transformation of the variables. What will be the decision criteria for the bounds test? You can reject the null hypothesis of no cointegration either at the 10%, 5%, or the 1% significance level. You can reject the null if the F value is greater than the critical value for the upper bound series. In that situation, we conclude that there is cointegration, there is long-run relationship, so we reject the null hypothesis. After which, we go ahead to estimate the long-run model, which is the error correction model. But what if the F value is lower than the critical bound? In that case, there is no cointegration between or among the variables. We cannot reject the null hypothesis and we can only estimate the short-run model, which is the ARDL model. And should in case the F value fall between the lower bound and the upper bound, in that situation, the test is considered to be inconclusive. So let us proceed to EViews to perform the bounds test. EViews is launched, and for this tutorial, I'll be using the log of manufacturing value added the real exchange rates and the GDP growth rates. We want to test if a long-run relationship exists among these variables. So to do that, we begin by going to Quick, click on Estimate Equation, and go ahead to list the variables. On that model, I'm going to change the least squares and select ARDL. For the maximum lags, because I only have 34 observations, that is a 34 year span, I'm going to limit the maximum lag to only one. So I'm changing four here to one. And I'm using the restricted uh, constant option in this situation. So ARDL is specified and I click OK. So this is the output for the ARDL model. For me to now obtain the bounce test for cointegration results, I proceed to click on view from the output window. I maneuver to coefficient diagnostics, click on long run form and bounce test. So on the screen is the result for the bounce test. We are only interested in this result from here downward. This is our focus. And remember the decision criteria that once the value for the F is lower than the IO bound, we cannot reject the null hypothesis of no cointegration. But if the F value is higher than the values on the I1 bound, we reject the null. But since we only obtained 0 0.6170, which is clearly lower than the IO series, IO bound values, sorry. In this case, we cannot reject the null hypothesis of no long-run relationship. So among log of MVA, real exchange rates, and uh, GDP growth rates, 
there is no co-integration. There is no long-run relationship. So we cannot reject the null hypothesis. So I conclude by saying that if series are co-integrated, it implies that there exists a long-run relationship. If that is the case, such series can be combined in a linear fashion because if there are shocks in the short run which may affect movement in the individual series, in the long run, there will be convergence. In that situation, you estimate both the long run and short run models, that is the ARDL and the VECM models. You cannot estimate VAR in this situation because you are having a combination of variables with IO and I1 integration. But what if the series are not co-integrated? That is, they do not exhibit a long-run relationship. It means you cannot run the VECM, you can only run ARDL. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more videos from Crunch Econometrics. Visit our website and our blog. Leave us your likes and your comments.